The sun is a powerful source of UV rays. If you've ever gotten sunburned on a clear day or left a belonging outside only to see it's faded over time, you've experienced the effects of ultraviolet or UV light firsthand. In this video, we will test the impact of prolonged UV exposure on various printed plastics. Through seven different processes, we've 3D printed numerous samples that will subject them to intense UV light to discern which plastics are the most UV resistant. Today, we're asking the question, Will it fade? Keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Greg Paulson from Zometry, a digital manufacturing marketplace that produces custom parts on demand. Our customers often ask us which 3D printed plastics are the most UV resistant. That question is tricky since most material data sheets don't list these results. If you've ever seen any of our previous videos, you know we like to perform experiments and find the answers ourselves. In this case, that is precisely what we're going to do. We printed these snap together poly panel designs out of various materials using industrial grade additive manufacturing equipment. This includes filament based thermoplastics using FDM, plastic powder bed fusion parts with SLS and MJF, and we also made panels out of resin-based materials from SLA, Polyjet, DLS, and LSPC. Our team designed a powerful UV light chamber with a turntable that will be utilized to ensure our samples get an even and consistent exposure. But before we move on, let's talk about ultraviolet light in more detail. The UV spectrum is broken into three main types based on wavelength. UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVA rays fall in the wavelength range of 315 to 400 nanometers and are the longest wavelengths of the three types. We commonly see this range of light used in black lights and resin carrying stations, such as this one by Nexus 3D. At 280 to 315 nanometers, the light falls into the UVB range. This shorter wavelength of light can have more harmful effects with prolonged exposure, such as a sunburn. UVC light has the shortest wavelength range at 100 to 280 nanometers. These rays can be much more destructive due to their high energy. UVC light can be used for sterilization because it effectively kills bacteria, viruses, and other microbes by causing damage at the cellular level. Proper protection and precautions must be taken when working with UVC light, as even acute exposure can damage the eyes and skin. Before this video, we tested with the UVA spectrum to get preliminary results, but we needed to speed things up given the various materials on hand. So we decided to expose our parts to UVC, which should see the effects more quickly than if we use the other wavelengths. We will use a sterilization light designed for HVAC systems as our light source and have taken the precautions using eye protection and proper ventilation to remain safe while performing our tests. So please do not try this at home. We designed our custom light chamber out of several mirrored acrylic panels that fit together to form a box. Getting the custom parts cut was relatively simple thanks to our sheet cutting service. All it took was uploading the designs to our Zometry Instant Quoting Engine, specifying the process and material and submitting an order. In only a few days, the pieces arrived and we were able to assemble the light chamber. In this test, we'll expose our materials to UVC light for roughly a week. The parts will rotate around the light source via a turntable to ensure all materials are exposed consistently. We masked a portion of the part to show the contrast between exposed and unexposed areas. So let's put these materials to the test. Okay, it's a little tight there, a little tight. Try not to break the ceramic. Let me try to go in this way. Oh, that's a crack. Something popped. I actually think the polyjet's gonna be... Nope, it broke. Um...
So this elegant assembly got a little janky in the end here because we had some snap offs of tabs. So you're gonna see some tape on the inside, but we do have our test subject made, it wraps in a circle, and this is gonna encirculate the uh, test fixture here. So we have our UV lights, they're gonna go here and the parts are gonna rotate through for the entirety of the test. Okay, so we're at our two day check-in on our Will It Fade UV resistance test. Let's take a peek. Okay, so we are definitely seeing some results here. Whites are beige, clears are amber, and dye, well, dye is dying. Let's take a closer look. This is kind of a stopping point before we finish up for the full week here. Um, something I'm gonna notice is that the resins, so those resin-based photopolymers are going from a white to more of a ambery or uh, dark cream color here, especially the ex-ceramic is going that brick red. Our clear materials are also showing a uh, movement from clear to more of an amber shade. Um, I really wanna highlight though that dye is not surviving. Uh, dye has really faded out, so red, green, blue, yellow dye have all faded out here. Our white ABS is again, going from white to cream where PLA and ASA are staying there. Although ASA is starting to show some fading, which is surprising. Moving over to the right-hand side, I really wanna note that MJF nylon, funny enough, looks unfazed. I'm interested to see what that's gonna look like after a week. And FDM Ultim is also looking in the unfazed stage. Uh, so curious about the results after a few more days. So we're back after a week of extreme UV exposure. So let's take a closer look to see what happened. This is gonna be good. All right, so we completed our one week long test of UV exposure for different 3D printed materials. Let's talk about the results. We asked the question, will it fade? The answer is definitely yes. I'm gonna start from top and move down to the bottom. So the very first thing I noticed was how much dyed materials faded out. You can see this on this yellow, blue, green, red, and even some of the black dyed SLS materials. And even on some of the MJF parts, so you, at the bottom here, that gray side is actually the UV exposed side, and the black side there is the mass side uh, for, for this test. So you can see that dyed pigmentation can definitely fade and wash out or bleach over time. Our FDM based materials, so these are filament based materials, the darker the color, the more it survived, the lighter the color, the more yellowed it got over time. This is what you're gonna see in all these materials is light materials, yellow over time, clear materials tend to get more ambery. But I do wanna point out the whites on this. So white ASA is a UV stabilized plastic and it definitely did fade less than the ABS material, which now looks like a cream color on this side, but it didn't mean it completely prevented UV fading. Even the stand that we use for this test faded over time. And this is a commercial good. You can even see here the shadows of where the parts were located, staying in white while the rest of this got yellow. I was very surprised how, at how PLA, a desktop 3D printing material, survived this test. But something really strange about all the PLAs is it's tacky to the touch. It, it feels sticky. 
And I'm actually not sure why that happened, but out of all these materials there, this is the only one that had a tactical change. And it's also something that I can smell. It smells like a desktop 3D printer right now as I'm uh, doing this video. Looking across these photopolymer resins, you can see how different and how much more extreme the fading was compared to something like a thermoplastic, like the SLS that's right down here. The colors in Polyjet really faded out, uh, going to much more of a yellow tone. You can even see that on our multicolor 3D print, how much uh, that faded on this side versus the much more vibrant mass side there. Anywhere you saw light speckles in our MJF parts, you got a little bit of yellowing. So again, those light colors would yellow out. But I did want to finish this with saying that Ultim always surprises me. Ultim itself, the 9085 variant and the Ultim 1010, both showed very little fading, if any. The 9085, I could kind of see if I hold it up to the, to the light just right. But overall, it looks pretty stable. The caveat I want to say here is that UV can cause mechanical differences in the performance of the plastics. We did not test that in this experiment. This is all about color fading. So what does this mean? Well, it means that if I'm choosing something that's end use in outdoors and applications or something that's going to be exposed to UV over time continuously, I may want to aim for darker color materials or think about other finishes like paint versus dye on those final results. If I'm choosing a light color material, I should expect something to happen over time in fading. It's not necessarily bad. I've made plenty of end use parts in SLS, for example, that have endured weathering and they just change color. That's something we see in other plastic products as well. But hopefully this helps you understand how different materials behave compared to each other and helps you make better decisions on your next application. If you're interested in any of the 3D printed processes or materials we tested, or want to explore the extensive array of services we offer, visit our website at www.zometry.com. You can upload your files using Zometry's free digital manufacturing platform to get instant pricing for your custom parts today. Check out our channel for more engineering challenges and learning resources. Make sure to follow us for more content. Thank you for joining us today on this exploration, and thanks for watching.